This video is spoiler free, except for what we can see in the trailer of course. Now there are a couple small things that I personally do not consider spoilers because they haven't been confirmed, but clips in this trailer made me mention their possibility. So if your spoiler sensitivity is turned up to the max, I will give you a fair warning so you can skip the few seconds where I mention those. You're now watching Because Geek. Alright, so right off the bat we're presented with what could be one of the most mysterious sequences that we've ever had in a Game of Thrones trailer. What is Arya doing here? Well, it's hard to answer, but I can point out many hints that we can use. We can immediately see that she's really scared. She looks like she wants to cry, she's sweaty, bloody, covered in mud, and she's running away from something. Speculations have been running wild about who she might be running away from. A very popular one is the mountain. And we can easily debunk this one because she's nowhere near King's Landing. Every single thing about this sequence points to Winterfell. Starting with the fact that the Entertainment Weekly article that came out recently stated that the actors involved in the Winterfell battle would be ankle deep in mud. And there's mud on Arya's face. But also the holes that she's running through are clearly the narrow holes we have seen many times in Winterfell. The width, the bricks, the lighter accents around the frames, the windows, and even the torches all look exactly the same. King's Landing halls look very different as you see here. They're wider, with larger windows, the brick is red, which is the color of the red keep, there's a lot of stairs, and the torches look very different. Now if you were thinking of the dungeons of King's Landing, well, there's no windows there. The only other place it could be is another castle in the north that looks similarly inside. But from the way that Arya looks, this is clearly part of the battle, and we know that the battle will be at Winterfell. So that's where I would put my money. Now we do get some glimpses of whatever is coming after Arya in certain frames, like here. We can also see a hand popping over her shoulder here, and you can also see them here. Now I'm immediately getting a white vibe. Even though their eyes aren't glowing blue in this frame, that could have been removed from the trailer specifically just to add more mystery to this sequence. But what really confirms to me that she's running away from whites and not any other living human is that she's still got that dragonglass dagger in her hand. The one weapon she has at the ready points to which enemies she's running away from. I mean, why would she use dragonglass against humans, right? She's got a perfectly sharper Valyrian steel dagger on her hip. So yes, I'm convinced that these guys are whites. But of course, you might be asking yourself, well, why is she not using the dagger? I can think of two reasons. One is that maybe there's just too many whites, even though we can't see them, and she can't stop to fight them on her own. She just needs to get the heck out of there as soon as possible. But what I really think is happening is that these whites are people that she used to know. And that could totally be the reason why she looks like she wants to cry. I mean, Arya is super brave, but that would be traumatizing for anyone. I mean, imagine if it were Gendry as a white chasing after her. Running away and crying is what I'd expect Arya to do in that situation, no matter how brave she's supposed to be. But yeah, there is still the question of how she ended up here. And when I was looking for hints, it just jumped out at me. That huge bloody bump on her forehead. I mean, something hit her really hard in the head to cause that much damage, right? And when you get hit that hard in the head, it knocks you out. This could be her waking up after lying there for a while knocked out. And there's even more hints that point to this, guys. This may blow your mind a little bit, so hold on to your butts for a second and take a good look at this. Do you see what I'm talking about? It's super clear here. Look at the light coming in through the window. guys. It's freaking daytime. The Winterfell battle happened at night. This is most definitely the next morning. It's still weird that she was fighting in the courtyard and somehow ended up inside. She either woke up after being knocked unconscious, or she had to go back the next day to get something that she left behind. But if that was the case, then it's gotta be something extremely important. And I can't think of anything. If it's the people that were hiding in the crypts, she wouldn't need to go through the halls to get them. The door is outside. I also thought that maybe she left behind her Valyrian dagger, but she clearly still has it on her hip. Who knows, maybe someone she cared about got hurt really bad during the battle and was bleeding out unable to move, so Arya stayed with them until morning, but the person didn't make it through the night, and now she has to leave them there and get out before they turn. That would be crazy. 
But anyway, as long as it's not just a dream sequence, I'm sure this scene will be great. By the way, thank you so much to Mel of Winterfell, Rygorn, Padraig Buckmaster, and Austin Bonds for becoming my patrons this February, and Stephen Bradshaw for increasing his pledge. Thank you guys so much! Woohoo! Let's keep going! Oh, and for those thinking that it might be the Night King chasing after Arya inside of Winterfell, come on! The Night King is too badass to be running after someone. If he's gonna do anything, he's gonna take his sweet ass time walking really slowly to do it. Like he's always done. As long as he's not on a dragon, of course. He's just too cool to be running around, come on. But yeah, by the way, I will talk about this clip here later. Let's move on to the Davos one now. There's not much to say about this one, I mean, he's on the battlements of Winterfell getting ready for battle. And it looks like he will be commanding the archers again like he did at the Battle of the Bastards. After this, we get a pretty funny shot of Varys hiding with the women and children in the crypts. And it makes sense that Varys is here, but I still find it hilarious. The only people I can recognize in the background are Gilly and Little Sam. But I'm sure there's a lot of other people here that we can't see in this frame. Nothing special about this Stark statue, just one of the many ones that are down there. It would be crazy to see the dead Starks rising from their graves in here, but I'm still skeptical on this. Just because they should be a pile of bones. And I think for a white to be able to move, they sort of need their bones to be attached together in some sort of human shape. So yeah, I don't know, but we shall see. I also think that we might see Sansa defending the people that are hiding in here. And there's gotta be an escape route out of Winterfell through the crypts, right? That's something else I'm expecting. What we get next is a bit of a trick from the people who edited this trailer. Because the first ships that we see are Theon's ships. And then after that, we see Euron's fleet. Which could get some people confused thinking that maybe it was Theon who's bringing the Golden Company back. Because, well, this is clearly the Golden Company here. And this is Harry Strickland, the commander of it, carrying what looks like a really cool curved blade from Essos. And if you look closely, for about two frames you can see Euron right here. Another way to tell that these two clips aren't connected is by looking at the sky. In this clip it looks very dark and in this other one it looks very bright. And this is sadly all that we get from Theon in this trailer. But the last time that we saw him, he was heading to the Iron Islands, because that's where Euron said he was going. So I don't think that they're going to run into the Golden Company, but who knows. Another thing I noticed here is that the entire army is standing up, and the crew is moving stuff around, as if they're getting ready because they're about to land. This is probably a clip that we see before or after the other clip that we see later on in the trailer, of Cersei and Kyburn. She's standing in the same spot where she stood with Jaime last season and watched Euron's fleet approaching. And yes, some people have pointed out that Cersei is not wearing her crown here, but she also wasn't wearing it when she stood here with Jaime last season. Another interesting thing to point out is that there is no snow on the ground, since we did see snow there last season, but the amount of it was very minimal, so it could have just melted. I highly doubt that they're showing us a clip from the epilogue here. And one more thing before we move on, Kyburn seems to be a bit concerned here, as if he doesn't like the idea that Cersei just told him about. But it could also just be Kyburn's normal face. Going back a bit, we get an awesome shot of Ed, Tormund and Beric, so 100% confirmed that they survived, which isn't very surprising. But also, let's figure out where they are. Let me tell you, it's definitely not another Night's Watch castle. The way that that brick wall and that door were constructed is kind of pricey. It looks more like Winterfell. But we have never seen this type of column here in Winterfell. Also, Beric would have no reason to walk into Winterfell with his sword lit up like that. Unless this is after Winterfell has fallen. But going back to this column, I again do not think that this is Winterfell. And I think that it's simply another castle in the north that looks like Winterfell. And the one that would make the most sense is Last Hearth, the closest castle to where Ed, Tormund and Beric were last seen. Now, I'm thinking that the dead have already gone through this castle, and that when these guys come in, they will find a bunch of dead bodies everywhere. Maybe this is where some of those casting calls come in, like the Northern Girl and the Northern Farmer who were filming at the same time, and are more than likely father and daughter. Maybe they're the only survivors left. Imagine a scene where these guys come in, they see this father and daughter huddled up in the corner, and when they try to walk towards them to see if they're okay or to save them, all of the dead bodies around them start to rise and they have to run away. That would be a pretty intense scene. 
Next, we get a quick shot of Bran and Sam, where at first I thought that they were in Bran's room and Sam's cold breath meant that the dead are coming. But after looking closer, I noticed that there's dirt here and this looks like snow, so they're outside. And for a second, I also thought that this could be a vision and that Bran is making Sam see it with his own eyes. But then again, Bran would probably be walking and not wearing furs. Are they going to be outside during the battle? That sounds dangerous, so Sam's worried face would make sense here. But I'm sure Bran knows what he's doing. And regarding the conversation that they might be having, it's hard to say if it's about Jon or the Night King. But either way, I just can't wait to see what Sam and Bran do together next season. After this, we get a shot of a little kid watching the Unsullied army marching through Wintertown on their way to Winterfell. I actually got really, really close with my prediction for this. In my mind, the opening scene being at Wintertown could have one or two purposes. Wintertown is around here on the map, so it would make sense if we see one or both of Danny's armies ride or march past the town. And having the opening scene here could work as an interesting point of view to see their arrival. It could also be the scene where we first see the dragons flying towards Winterfell. Maybe we're shown a little kid who's playing outside and sees the dragons for the first time, goes running to his mom to let her know what he just saw, and she doesn't believe him until she goes outside and sees the dragons for herself and the whole army. Hopefully they can spot Jon pretty quickly because they might freak out thinking that they're getting attacked. Man, predicting stuff like this correctly when you only have a little hint to work with is one of the best feelings in the world. But yeah, having this little kid's point of view is reminiscent of how both Bran and Arya saw King Robert's procession approaching Winterfell back in Season 1. Now we see Jon and Danny riding together, not much to say about this, except that it's kinda nice to see Daenerys on a horse again, but yeah. Of course we see Drogon and Rhaegal flying over Winterfell, I mean, we needed that shot. And seeing Sansa's face is just priceless. Now this scene I do have a lot to say about. First of all, we can see that there's a lot more braziers than usual in here, which makes sense because it's part of the preparations for the battle. And I can think of two reasons for this. First, it would be nice for the people that are going to be hiding in here to have a bit more light than usual. And second, they do need to have a lot of fire handy around Winterfell. You certainly don't want to run out when you're fighting the army of the dead. Now, first of all, I want to point out that we can actually see a bit of the shape of the statue that John might be looking at. But this angle could still be either the cape and knees from the seated statues, the cape on Ned's statue, or Lyanna's gown. And honestly, it does match Lyanna's gown the closest. But before we get too excited, there is something really weird going on here that we have to address. You see, whenever a Stark is in the crypts and someone else comes in, they always come in on their left side, because they're usually looking at a statue that's on this side. That's where both Lyanna's and Ned's statues are. You can see Littlefinger here entering the crypts on Sansa's left side, who was facing Lyanna's statue. Then Littlefinger again entering on Jon's left side, when he was facing Ned's statue and Sansa entering on Arya's left side when she was facing Ned's statue as well. Clearly the entrance is on that side, so unless Danny was already inside of the crypts in this shot, Jon is neither looking at Ned's nor Lyanna's statues here. And so of course I thought, well, the shot has got to be flipped, right? Well, no. That doesn't seem to be the case because of the following shot where Danny has clearly reached Jon still on his right side. And we know for a fact that this shot isn't flipped, thanks to the sword held by the statue behind them, which has always held the sword in their right hand. You can see it here, 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 and here. Did the word here lose its meaning for you yet? Yeah, there's a lot of these statues, and all of them hold stuff in their right hand. But another important detail is that this type of statue is also opposite to both Ned's and Lyanna's statues. You can see Sansa here lighting a candle on one of those, right before she walks over to Lyanna's statue on the other side. And when both Jon and Arya visited Ned before, you can also see that same type of statue behind them. Other than that, the only thing that we know for sure is that Ned's statue is right next to Lyanna's. So that also proves that John is looking at Ned or Lyanna, right? Nope. 
This statue is holding its sword by the hilt. These ones are holding it by its blade. And this one, which I believe is the same as this, isn't even a sword, it looks more like a spear. I don't think we've ever seen a statue holding its sword by the hilt. Did they make new props that look slightly different this season? Or is John really not looking at either Ned or Lyanna here? Is John really looking at one of the seated statues that they have never looked at before? Is he maybe just inspecting the preparations of the crypts? This could actually mean that Danny is in fact entering through the right side, and that for some reason John was looking at statues on this side, instead of the normal side. But for argument's sake, let's say that she was already there. Was Danny just exploring the rest of the crypts without John? Was she helping with the inspection? Did she come over to John through a secret passage? Or was this shot truly flipped and she simply went around him in this one? I don't know guys, I am so confused. But there's still the question of why John is brooding more than usual. It could be because he already knows that he's a Targaryen and doesn't want to tell Danny. If he is standing in front of Lyanna's statue, then maybe this could be the scene where he reveals the secret to Danny. Or another reason that John might be brooding is because Jaime has already given them the news about Cersei's betrayal, which was caused by John, so it would definitely be affecting him like this. Whatever it is, I'm just annoyed that all of that sleuthing effort may have been for nothing. This is my face right now, but let's move on. Our next shot I absolutely love because it's Gendry being a smith at Winterfell, which is awesome. But yeah, right away I see that there's a mountain of dragonglass here, and it's right next to a sword being forged, which makes me think that Gendry may have figured out how to imbue swords with dragonglass, instead of figuring out how to forge Valyrian steel again, which I agree with those who say that it would devalue the few Valyrian steel weapons that are left in the world. Having Gendry figure out a new way to forge weapons would be just as cool, in my opinion. But we also know that they'll be using that dragonglass for lots of arrowheads, spearheads and daggers, so it could just be there for that. I'll just add here that I also wanted to see maybe Sam and Bran going back into the past to maybe find some old forging techniques to give to Gendry. Now some have mentioned that the girl behind Gendry looks like Yara, but when you pause you can tell that she's not. I do hope that Yara is okay though. Next we have a really cool shot of Jorah outside of Winterfell getting ready for battle, and right away we have proof that at least some of the Dothraki do make it all the way to Winterfell. In past videos I've mentioned the possibility of the Dothraki army getting caught up in a snowstorm and dying that way. This could still happen to some of them, but I'm glad to see that there are definitely still Dothraki riders around. Another big thing to notice here is that Jorah seems to be carrying a special type of sword. Yes, this right here is Heartsbane, which makes sense because he needs more than a normal steel sword to be able to fight what's coming, but it also makes sense because of the connection Sam and Jorah have had ever since Sam helped cure his grayscale. It may not be one of the most anticipated reunions, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this exchange now between them, where Sam decides to give him his precious weapon. This does bring to mind though what we heard from the Entertainment Weekly article, where they mentioned that Sam would be wielding a sword against whites, and we all assumed that it would be Heartsbane. But even though there are ways for Sam to get it back after Jorah uses it, I think it's highly unlikely, and I'm now more convinced that he will be wielding a different sword. But yes, we do have to mention that it's possible that Jorah will die, and that's how Sam could get his sword back. A really sad idea, but it's gotta be said. Speaking of people dying, they've been pretty much rubbing it on our faces that one of these two is going to die this season. Way too many love scenes for it not to be a setup, and this kiss is very likely to be their last kiss. Besides, later on in the trailer we do see Grey Worm leading the Unsullied army outside of Winterfell in the Vanguard, which is just the most dangerous place for anyone to be, so I'm gonna be shocked if he doesn't die. But if he dies and comes back as a white, I hope Miss Sunday isn't anywhere near. But she probably will be. Or it could be flipped, it could be Miss Sunday who dies and then comes back and kills Grey Worm. Anything could happen, but something's gonna happen. An interesting thing to notice between this clip and the last one is all of the new defenses that they've added to the Winterfell castle. There's these spiky things right here that we have seen in leaked images of the set before, but now that we get to see them up close, we can clearly see that there's dragonglass tips all over them, and they've probably done the same thing to these spiked logs that are hanging from the battlements, which should help hold back most of the whites that try to climb the walls. 
but some of them will definitely climb them, as we see in this shot, where one of them is being killed by Brienne. And yes, this is definitely Brienne wielding Oathkeeper here. It's pretty blurry, but you can still see the lion head pommel at the end of the hilt, and the little heads on the straight crossguard. The hair and body shape matches her too, and she's standing right next to Jamie and Podrick. Yes, this is Podrick back here. I've also heard some people say that Bronn is here as well, but we just can't see him. And I really hope that's true. But wait! During my livestream, we completely missed another major character who I just noticed is also standing here. Tyrion! This is freaking Tyrion right here! Can't believe I didn't see him before. Other than that, from the color of the scene, we can tell that there is a lot of fire outside of Winterfell at this moment. It could have been caused by this shot that we see later on in the trailer. In this next one, we get an excellent visual metaphor, with this white shot of the huge empty throne room, representing how alone Cersei is now, as well as showing her very small on her throne. And she's definitely talking to Harry Strickland here. He's wearing the same baggy pants that we saw earlier, with Euron standing right next to him. In the next scene, we have Cersei crying, which is really weird to see, but her eyes are definitely wet and her jaw is trembling. She does do a bit of her signature smirk for a second there, but that's just her trying to keep it together. She's clearly at her lowest point right here, and since she's dressed down, wearing what seems to be a nightgown, her hair is kinda messy and she's in her room and not in the throne room, I don't think that the city is under attack or anything like that. I think she's probably in the middle of a more comfortable situation. But also, what she's wearing, plus the fact that she's drinking wine again, also makes me think that this is happening right after she heard from Kyburn that she's lost her baby as we've had hints that this might happen in the middle of the night. And we also know that she had stopped drinking wine when she found out that she was pregnant. Some people have speculated that she's crying because she received news that Jamie died, but since this is more than likely an earlier episode, I do not believe that Jamie has died. Just yet. Oh yes, now we get these beautiful shots of Drogon and Rhaegal flying over a snowy landscape. And I've gotta give a huge shout out to the people in the chat who were watching my trailer livestream who helped me notice that this is more than likely the Vale of Arryn, more specifically the Way to the Bloody Gate. And yes, the times that we have seen the Way to the Bloody Gate before, it's never had any water in the middle, like it seems to have here. But come on, the geography is just way too similar. We also know that they filmed stuff in Iceland for season 8, and the filming location for the Bloody Gate is in Iceland too. On top of that, it makes more sense for John and Danny to be going to the Vale than it does for them to be going beyond the wall again. I'm convinced that they're going to the Vale. Oh, and yes, I do believe that John and Danny are riding Drogon and Rhaegal here, and that this scene will happen soon after this one that we see later on in the trailer. Yes, guys, finally, we're gonna see John ride Rhaegal, I promise you. We have to. But again, the editors of this trailer are trying to trick us, okay? Because clearly in this first shot, there is no one on top of Rhaegal. So I believe that this is a shot of the dragons before they fly over Winterfell, and this is a separate scene later on. But if they are going to the Vale, the question is, why? Why are Jon and Danny going there seemingly by themselves? It must be happening pretty early in the season because I highly doubt that this trailer has any epilogue scenes. Maybe they're going to the Vale after they found out that Danny is pregnant and she needs a safe place to give birth. Or maybe they have realized that the North is in an entirely safe place and they're going to try to ask Robin if they can relocate everyone to the Vale. Or at least the survivors, if they fit. Or maybe they're trying to set up a trap for the Night King and his army. Could it be related to this shot? I don't know, we'll see what happens here. But it does seem like the safest place to be. Because, as you might remember... The Eerie. They say it's impregnable. Then we get to see Arya's face again when she sees the dragons for the first time at Wintertown, which we had already seen in the teaser, but I'm sure nobody minds seeing it again. And I'm really excited for this because I think it means that Arya and Jon will have their separate reunion. Crossing my fingers so hard for this. Oh, and to answer the question of why Arya is here, I would say that she's just organizing the safety of the people who live here. That's my best guess. We've already talked about this Grey Worm shot, but the only thing that I'd want to add here is that I noticed that they added something to their shield, which I can only guess is more Dragonglass because that's the only thing worth adding to anything that they use in battle. And I think anyone would agree that there's no such thing as too much Dragonglass. 
And after that we see John at the Winterfell Godswood. And again, some people pointed out that maybe it's not the Winterfell Godswood because we can't see the pond, but we haven't been able to see the pond in a while as you can see in these other scenes. It's just frozen over with snow on top. But yeah, what is John doing here? I did wonder if maybe he was talking to Bran and we can't see him, but I don't think John would be able to cover the entire chair, especially since the camera is panning around him a bit. But not only that, John is looking up at the tree, which makes me believe that he's there to talk to the gods and not Bran. Even though there's probably a connection between Bran and the gods, but let's leave that for later. I think this might actually be another hint that John already knows who his real parents are, and that he's just dealing with so much internal turmoil from it. That would be a good reason to visit this place that is so intertwined with the Stark lineage. Maybe he's asking the old gods for a sign, you know, something like, should I just continue to be a Stark? Please, Tree, tell me. But yeah, let's move on. Ah, yes, we do get a super quick shot of the Hound, and it looks like it's in the middle of the Winterfell battle. He seems to be once again hiding away from the fire, but if you look closely, he also seems to be taking a deep breath, something that people usually do right before they accept a new resolve. It looks to me like he's getting ready to finally get over his fear of fire and run out there to continue fighting stronger than before. And now, as Jamie finishes his sentence, we see him talking. I promise to fight for the living. I intend to keep that promise. He's definitely just arrived at Winterfell and he's explaining why he's there. His words actually echoed to me what Jon said to Mance Raider when he tried to convince him that he was on his side. I want to fight for the side. The fight for the living. So these exact words that Jamie is using should definitely convince John. And well, we know they will because we've already seen Jamie in Stark armor. Anyway, after this we get a hand holding a bow. And a lot of people think it's Arya's hand. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because it's just a hand. But I do want to point out that yes, the hand that Arya uses to shoot a bow has been inconsistent. Even though Macy wanted to use her left hand when playing Arya, she's explained that sometimes it didn't work quite right for her camera angles, and she had to switch back. So it's possible that that's what happened in this scene. So yeah, we can't rely on Arya's dominant hand when sleuthing, but it's still hard for me to believe that this is Arya, because if this is from the Winterfell battle, we see her fighting later on with her gloves on. I'm sure she could switch from a bow to another weapon, but she wouldn't put her gloves on for that. So yeah, that's why I think this is more than likely someone else. I even went ahead and looked for similar fabrics to this one, which looks like padded armor from its texture instead of leather. And it seems to have that diagonal pattern that northern kids and soldiers wear. But my results were inconclusive when I found Sam and this house Aaron guy wearing the same pattern as well. So, other than eliminating Yara or Mira as possibilities, because they don't wear anything remotely close to this, I wasn't able to narrow it down any further than that. All I can say is that it definitely looks like a female hand, especially because of the longer fingernails. If it were a boy's hand, I would expect the fingernails to be really short, like Bran has them here. And it most definitely does not look like a grown man's hand, but then again, I thought Grey Worm's hand was a girl's hand in the season 7 trailer, so yeah. Who knows, maybe this isn't even from the Winterfell battle and it's all a trick from the editors again. It could even be Ned Umber at Last Hearth if they did film some of the battle there. But yeah, I said I wouldn't spend so much time on this, dammit, let's move on. Here we once again get two more shots that seem to be connected, but more than likely aren't. Because... That's just the way it is with trailers, but also the lighting in these clips does not match at all, and that is a dead giveaway. Now, what is John doing here? Well, he seems to be running somewhere outside of the castle because there's fire arrows on the ground, which have no reason to be inside, as well as this pyre and the fact that we can't see any walls or structures around him. I can't really tell if he's running towards the castle or towards the army of the dead, but he's definitely outside. As always, being brave as fuck. Now, I could have sworn that these guys were inside because when I looked for outside shots of the main gate of Winterfell, it looked nothing like this. The shape of the frame is different and there's no torches on the walls. I was convinced that these guys were inside of the courtyard until I noticed this. Yeah, that's one of those spiky things I pointed out before. And I don't think that they would put one of those inside, so... These must be soldiers who are retreating into the castle after being overwhelmed by the army of the dead. 
Although the fact that the gate looks so different still bothers me. It doesn't even match any of the inside gates either. And trust me, I looked through every courtyard scene there is. It could always be Last Hearth, since we've discussed that possibility before. But I think it's more likely for this to simply be a new part of the Winterfell set, since we know for a fact that they built a lot of new parts for Season 8. This makes my evidence once again inconclusive, but thankfully this is not one of the most important clips in this trailer, like the hand one. So let's keep going. Ah yes, this clip right here. I know everyone wants this to be the wolf pack, but to be honest with you, all I see here is horse hooves. Horse hoof after horse hoof. And horse tails. This white stuff here could be ghost, but it could just as likely be another white horse. I don't think it matters too much though, Ghost has been confirmed to be back in Season 8, so even if he's not here, we know we will get more Ghost action for sure. And while I do hope to see Nymeria's pack again, I would expect them to be too wild to be coordinated enough to run along with an army of horses. In my mind, a more likely scenario would be to see them appear out of nowhere in the middle of the battle to give their life for a Stark. I've been thinking for a while that Nymeria would give her life to save Sansa to pay the debt that she owes Sansa's wolf lady, who gave her life for Nymeria. But I would also love to see Nymeria saving Arya, of course. Who wouldn't want to see that? And hey, maybe it could happen after this anxiety-inducing scene. I'd be happy with that. I'd be pleased. Oh yeah, and these are probably just Dothraki horses running towards the army of the dead. But yeah, moving on. Right, Jon and Danny visiting Drogon and Rhaegal. I do think that this is somewhere really close to Winterfell, where the dragons have made their lair, so to speak. Because clearly there's no room for them in the castle. And even though I don't think this is Winterfell back here, I do still think that this is very close to Winterfell. And it could also be related to this picture right here, which we thought would happen before they arrived at Winterfell. But they weren't on their horses, and they seemed to be in a remote place, so that had confused many. Now we can see that the background of this remote place and their outfits completely match what we see in this clip. So yeah, this looks like a mystery solved to me. We then get a shot of Sansa's face, and the environment around her looks very calm, so I'm assuming that this is once again just Sansa watching Danny's army approaching. Now this is Arya finally putting those skills to good use against real enemies. And she's definitely fighting on the newly built parts of the set, because she's on the battlements. These Merlons here are the same ones that we've seen in these other shots. And that is the one part I know for sure they built specifically for this season, to be able to have all of these battle scenes on them. You can also see that they're covered in dragonglass. Why? Because guys, there is no such thing. Just too much dragon glass. But here's something I want to talk about. Here's one of those warnings that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Again, this is an unconfirmed rumor and not a spoiler. But if that's still too much for you, you can skip to this time of the video. We can see her hitting an enemy right here, but we can't tell if what's flying off is blood or just pieces of white. This is actually important because whites don't have blood in them, and if it is blood, then that means that she's fighting actual living humans, which is possible if you believe in the rumors that Cersei will use her golden company to attack Winterfell. Now none of this has been confirmed, but yeah, it's on the table. They could be fighting living humans here. I mean, Jamie's face seemed to be covered in blood too, but it could be his own blood. So yeah. Now we get a quick shot of Danny closing her eyes here, and I see a little bit of movement behind her, which could potentially be the person that she just spoke to, leaving the room. But I also want to point out that in this shot, she's wearing the same outfit that she's wearing in this picture, where we've all assumed that she's finally meeting the Northern Lords. So could this scene be from before or after that? It could be a worried face, because she doesn't know what to expect, but it could also be a sad face, from being upset about how that meeting went. But really, it could be anything. Hell, it could even be that she just told me Sunday that she's gonna put Grey Worm in the vanguard, or something like that. I don't think so, but you get what I mean. This is one of those clips that is just not worth speculating too much on. Like this one. I mean, Tyrion looking at something, right? The only thing that we can tell is that maybe there's no snow on the ground. Although that could also be the coloring that was used in post-production. But if it is dirt without snow on it, then it's possible that this is Tyrion in the south. Maybe looking up at King's Landing from the outside. Or looking up at the dragons approaching. It's just really hard to guess with how little we can see in this shot. 
Now, I did mention this clip right here really quickly near the beginning of the video, but just to add a bit more to it, the dragons are now too big to fit in any castle, so if they're outside, then it's clearly nighttime. And this looks very much like a surprise attack from the dragons towards the army of the dead. Besides, you can see that orange glow on his face before he opens his mouth, which matches up with the lighting that we will see from the pyres and braziers that were set up all around Winterfell before the battle started. So if I had to guess, this is a dragon shooting fire at the army of the dead during the Winterfell battle. Now here we get a panning shot of not only the Unsullied, but also the trebuchets. Now I've spoken about these trebuchets in past videos, but here we finally have proof that they've been set up outside of Winterfell to be used against the army of the dead with lit projectiles, which makes a lot of sense. But yeah, a lot of these guys are sadly gonna die. Okay, I really wanted to talk about this clip in particular because a lot of people are scared seeing Podrick seemingly at the vanguard as well. But I believe this is inside of Winterfell because of many reasons. One of them is that we've seen Pod and Brienne already fighting on the battlements of Winterfell, which is inside. But also, these Knights of the Vale are not on horses. And the only reason they wouldn't be on horses is because they're inside of Winterfell. So they're probably standing here just waiting for a signal or something like that. But yeah, the main point of this is that I wanted to ease your worries about Podrick. But at the same time, I don't know if Podrick will make it. I don't know, I don't know guys. We'll see. I hope he does, but I mean, he's been training this whole time for something, right? And I hate to say it, but he's one of the most expendable characters that we have left that we have an emotional connection with. So I would be surprised if they don't kill him. Finally, after this, we see Jorah one last time, probably crapping his pants, before we get the final shot of the trailer, the dead horse hooves in the distance, approaching Winterfell. Oh yeah, amazing way to end this trailer. But yeah, let's talk about the voiceovers now. Starting off with the first one, said by Arya. I know Dath. He's got many faces. I look forward to seeing this one. The fact that the first thing she says is, I know death, sounds like an answer to someone who just told her that the Night King is some version of death, or death itself, which points to her talking to Jon, who would definitely refer to the Night King that way. And while I do like the idea that she's talking to Jon because of the parallel with season 1, where he gave her a needle and now he's giving her a dragon glass dagger, I'm going to say that she's talking to Gendry, because if you look at the background, it looks very similar to this. The same wooden beams, and this looks like one of those smithing tools that he's using. But also, the overall colors and lighting of both images is the same. And this might be my eyes seeing what my brain wants them to see, but I would say that his jawline here also matches Gendry's. Oh, and if she's being given a dagger, the one who's making those is Gendry, so there you go. Money is on Gendry. All in. But yeah, clearly Arya has no idea what's coming, because she looks all badass and confident and everything here, and then she's crying her eyes out, scared to death later on. It might be a crazy theory, but I'm gonna put this out there because I think this could be pointing to the fact that it will be Arya who finishes off the Night King. I don't know. Needless to say, Arya is talking about the god of death that she knows. The god that has many faces. The god that she's been learning about ever since she started her training back in season 1 with Sirio. She learned more about it during her stay at the House of Black and White, and now she's actually going to face it. Pun totally intended. Now next, we have a line said by Bran. Everything you did brought you where you are now. Where you belong. Home. And this completely fits both John and Danny, so he could be saying it to either one of them. But I'm going to put my money on John, because John definitely seems to be the one who needs to hear that this season. Danny may also need to hear it, but not coming from Bran. And you know, I also thought for a second that he could be saying it to both of them, because that you could be a plural one instead of a singular one. But thank God for my native language being Spanish, because I was able to check out the official Latin American translated version of this trailer, and they used the singular noun, so that confirmed that Bran is only talking to one person. And my money is still on John. But it's interesting how they show where you belong, with the red keep in the background, and then home, with Winterfell in the background. Could they be trying to make a connection there between Targaryen and Stark? Then we hear John giving his usual speech to inspire people to fight the army of the dead. They're coming. Our enemy doesn't tire, doesn't stop, doesn't feel. 
He doesn't seem to be yelling it, so I don't think this is a speech that he's giving to the army before they start fighting. It sounds like something that he's just saying during their normal Great Hall meetings. But I do really like how they put Missandei's and Grey Worm's kiss right as he says doesn't feel. Just another little reminder here that this battle is for life, like Beric told us. So what are you fighting for? Life. Death is the enemy. Life against death. The living against the dead. They're fighting for the joy of living. It's kind of deep if you really think about it. I had yet another stroke of luck regarding trailer translations when Gordon Adams, shout out to you, pointed me to the Russian version of the trailer, which seems to put to rest the question of whether Jamie is yelling Bron or Bron in this scene. So according to the Russian trailer, Jamie is in fact yelling Bron! Bron! What? That is definitely not where I have put my money. And this trailer seems to be very official, because I doubt that anyone without authority could get their hands on a version of the trailer that still has all of the music and sound effects in it, but none of the English voices. Все твои поступки вели тебя сюда. Здесь твое место. And yes, I also unnecessarily double-checked to see if by chance the word run sounded similar in Russian, but it's бежать. So yeah, no. <laughs> and by the way, this isn't a super trivial thing either, okay? The fact that Jamie is yelling Bron not only confirms that Bron is there, which is great because this is what we wanted, but it also means that Bron is in danger. And being in danger during this battle as a secondary character sounds like really bad news. So um, if you love Bron just as much as me, this is going to be a really hard scene to watch. What did we not get in this trailer? Well, we didn't get much of Theon and definitely did not get Yara. We didn't get Melisandre and I think it's because whatever she's bringing back from Volantis is going to be a huge surprise, so any scene showing her would be too spoilery. We also didn't see the Night King at all, or Viserion, which I'm fine with. I like the mystery that it adds to the trailer. If I'm missing anyone, please let me know in the comment section and let me know what else you found. Here's my other warning, I'm about to talk about something that could mean anything, so it's not a spoiler, but it could be too much for people who want to know nothing. So if that's you, please skip to this time in the video. Oh yes, and I've heard the rumor going around about these hybrid Stark and Targaryen sigil. These are 100% Knights of the Vale. They would not be wearing that type of sigil. And there is nothing on their breastplates. That's just a random pattern caused by damage to it. That hybrid sigil does exist, it was revealed at the rap party, but it's not in this trailer. There is a good chance that we see it in the show, but I say that it could mean anything because it doesn't prove that anyone lives or dies. The only thing it could be spoiling is that maybe Jon decided to marry Danny while remaining a Stark, and this is the sigil that their child will bear, which isn't all that shocking. But it could also just be a design for something else. Something representing the two houses that played a major part in defeating the army of the dead. But the main point I wanted to make is that it does not make an appearance in this trailer, like some have said. Other than that, I think it was an amazing trailer overall, and I can't wait for the second one. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like if you liked it, subscribe for more, hit the bell to get notified about my new videos, and I will see you in the next one! I know it doesn't work as well when you can't see me, but doing a voice-only recording helped me save time, so yeah. You'll see me next time. I'm getting a feeling that this season is going to be a lot scarier than I expected. There is no such thing. Let's do it, Dragonglass!